there, it's Q again, and welcome to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel, and today we're trying something a little different. I'm recording off screen like I usually do, but instead of locking the focus down, I'm letting the uh, camera do its own thing. This sees a little less moray when I'm filming off screen, so there's still moray, you can still kind of see it happening, but it's, there's less. So what this video is covering is uh, something I talked about in the previous video. I fired up the good old uh, Vampire Apollo standalone, the uh, V4, and I was running Apollo OS and I was trying to show off Apollo OS. And we did run into a couple of quirks and then there was some solutions basically it involved having to uh, flash the core on the V4 to an older core, then boot up, then go ahead and click through the preferences. Once those preferences were set, you could then shut it down, update the core to the latest, boot up successfully. Now, I could have done all that and it would have worked, but someone did uh, bring something up to me and they said, well, one of the things you might want to try is this Coffin OS. And I guess Coffin OS is another uh, person's take yet again on the all-in-one everything Amiga operating system release. So I went ahead and flashed that Coffin OS to a compact flash card put it in the vampire, turned it on, and this is the screen I got. And it's talking about Coffin. R58 requires at least release five. Now I'm guessing this is a little out of date because release seven, I believe, is the latest. And actually I'm running a release slightly newer than that. So I'm gonna say skip for now and let's see what happens. So it's doing a first boot wizard. I'm gonna go ahead and click proceed. Looks like we get to set some basic settings here. These look fine, I'll just go ahead and hit save. Pick my time zone, looks like it already found it. So we go into the good old games and holy gosh, there is a pile of stuff in here. Okay, I guess is this really on here? Um, wow, all right, so lots of games. We've got some emulators in here. Oh wow, there's a lot of emulators in here. I guess you know, of course, with the power of the V4 from Apollo here, there is plenty of uh, juice to run all this stuff. Wow, look at this. This is kind of freaking me out. I mean, I know what WHD load is, and I know what MAME is, and DOSBox, but there's all kinds of other stuff in here. Workbench 3.1, Workbench 1.3. Oh, these are actual, like, oh, neat, like WHD load workbench environments. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, that's fun. So what else do we have in here? We've got productivity, tools, videos, 3D. Well, you know I want to click that 3D folder, right? Oh, well, what is this? Lightwave 3D. So let's go ahead and fire good old Lightwave up and it's going to open up in a really disgusting screen mode. So does this come pre-installed with my favorite mode promotion program? Let's find out. Um, no, it does not. I just did the hotkey for the mode promotion program I like to use and it's not showing up. So um, it is nice and zippy fast though, of course. So that's something you need to take care of on your own. Now Modeler's got its own ability without mode promotion to let you actually pick a screen for it to open on. Let's see if any of these work. A lot of times these don't work because Modeler gets really fussy with Saga. So let's go down here to, let's say like 800 by 624 bit. All right, so Modeler did say that's cool and it looks beautiful and it's four by three and this is exactly what we want to see, and it's nice and slick. I'm not seeing any artifacting. We can go over here to display, go to options, go to preview, do solid. And there's our little ball. Ball? That's a box cue. There's our box. There's no weird glitching or artifacting. This is pretty fun. I like this. Hit the old move button. There we go. Do our hotkeys work? Yep, our hotkeys do work. So modeler, because it has built-in RTG selection support, you don't have to mode promote. But let's also check out the 2D folder. In the crate, there's TV Paint. Now remember, if you remember when I ran TV Paint, the last time it was kind of a partial install and we didn't actually see any of the resolutions that were available like this. So now we can see them. That's already uh, a big improvement. So I'm gonna go down to my favorite, 800 by 600, click Default, click OK. And there we go, we've got our TV Paint working as it should. Yeah, okay, perfect. So far, so good. You know, this hasn't crashed yet either. This is fun because, especially with uh, the mode promotion stuff. And then 
Oh, look at this, Image Effects 4. So he let me know that when I clicked on this open button, see how nothing happens? Okay, so he told me I need to go to Prefs, and then I need to go to File Requester, and I need to take it from the awesome thumbnail mode and make it ASL standard mode. Click OK, click Save, boom. Now you have a file requester that works. So thank you so much for that. So we can go ahead and load up. There's no pictures in the pictures folder. Oh, of course there isn't. Why, why would there be? Um, well, is there textures that can let? No. Okay. Hmm. Well, there you go. It does work though. And <laughs> now I can actually open files. I do like that the, there is a lot on here, but it's not too much. Um, and then and it's kind of like the core 2D programs a lot of us used who were uh, creative professionals back in the day. Um, I will say the 3D side is a little light. We, I see Plotter 3D, POV Ray, Lightwave, and Cinema 4D. I appreciate both of these. Having Cinema 4D is a great companion program because it has really good uh, file transfer I.O. for getting model formats or uh, data to other 3D programs, which is very critical. I did notice here there's the Pixel Pro, and this is another uh, program that does allow you to you know, send uh, information or data from like Lightwave to another program like Cinema 4D or Imagine or even uh, load in DEM files from Vista Pro. So there's a lot of support 3D software that you do want to have. And I see that the, that stuff is in here. And I mean, I could do a whole other video. Well, look, there's a screen promoter right there. Yep. So there's new mode. Um, I could do a whole video on all of the support software that comes that you should be using when, you, when you're working with 3D uh, animation and, and art on an Amiga. You have to remember that in the United States, the Amiga being used as a creative tool for both 2D, uh, 3D, and then audio was a big deal out here, so that we use that a lot more than the gaming side, so seeing this stuff is really fun. There's the pile of benchmarks, of course. We'll go ahead and open this up this time. Um, that, 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 uh, that didn't go well, so we're gonna go. Did we get our first crash? <laughs> So let's see if we can get back at that. We'll go back into programs, benchmarks, AIBB. We're gonna run that again. All right, this time it didn't ask for anything, but it actually did load this. Gonna go ahead and click on beach ball. Very good, there's the beach ball. And now the Vampire V4 is making a beep tone. Can you hear that? Yeah, that's the vampire beeping. Um, I've never heard that before in my life on it. I didn't even know it had a speaker on it. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot. I've never heard that beep. Uh, the top is off on my vampire V4, so it's not even kind of sealed up. And it's got pretty decent cooling. The ambient temperature in my office is pretty low, about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So yes, there's plenty on it. I've run the things that are relevant to me. I do see this Mac thing. Let's go ahead and click it and see what happens, because why not? It seems fun. Uh, I'm just going to click Start blindly without setting anything. And it's going to start right up, it looks like. And here we have a really nice and responsive, actually, Mac OS 8. That is really quick. Wow. Got the built-in applications, and there is a Programs folder. And it looks like it is full of some pretty interesting looking thing. Oh, yes, Warcraft, World of Warcraft. Oh, well, look at all this stuff. Okay, so this has, uh, this is the tour, tour of everything Mac. Do you really think Duke Nukem is going to work on a Mac on this? Really? Which one do you, which one do you run? Is K being cracked? I have no idea. Ah, yes. This is a fun game, too. I call this software failure. And uh, the neat thing is you always win just by clicking the left mouse button. All right. Well, that was fun. And I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can show you. There's a one that says games and demos. Let's click on demos. And OK, we were getting a nice. So this is iGame. That's what this icon is. And we're just getting a nice, big, fun list of uh, demos. Go ahead and click on one here and see how it fires up. All right. Looks like it. Um, I don't want to blame the WHD load file for this, that it didn't do the right aspect ratio, but uh, my monitor is a, tel a television set, not a computer monitor. So this monitor does have a switch on it for 4x3, which I currently don't have enabled. So I bet if I flick that switch to 4x3, we'd see a, a more proper aspect ratio.
But yeah, as you can see, the demo is working. It's actually some really nice artwork. I mean, I love the shading on this and all the detail that went into these rocks. It's a good, good job. Not sure what year this demo came out. I think that's about what I'm going to do for Coffin right now. It was just a brief overview, just like I wanted to show you before with Apollo OS, except it did get a little further this time. And as always, I tried to show you some of the ins and the outs, as you saw in real time as I use it, the issues I did run into. And again, please leave comments in the description for the obvious fixes to some of the things I ran into. Um, or it could just simply be you know, a side effect of maybe I'm running a newer release core than what Coffin was asking for at the very start of all of this. So you know, I have not forgotten about that. And this is a lot of videos in the video format as I'm trying to end this video. I'm going to click on this Flynn's and see what happens. Oh, very nice. Why don't we just end it with Flynn's here? Obviously, if any music starts playing, I'll have to kill it anyway because the whole copyright thing. Pretty sure this is going to be uh, Doth Punk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you uh, again. And thanks for the help, everyone.